Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike from Alley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 24th, 2021, according to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for three tropical storms to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days. So let's kind of jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we continue to monitor three tropical disturbances on our radar. This will soon be area of Invest 99L. This is Invest Area 97L and 98L back here. And then we will be watching another tropical wave uh, that will be exiting off of Africa during the next several days or so, which is gaining a little bit more model support uh, as this uh, is now coming into focus here of some of the um, medium, kind of short to medium range models. So we really have about four systems, but three systems currently that we're watching. This system right here is very broad, disorganized, and this is in part because of an upper level system. And this is not expected to develop into any tropical disturbance over the next several days, but we'll keep an eye on it just because, again, it will be bringing some impacts towards areas in the Bahamas and maybe even Florida during the next several days or so. You can see this represented here on the tropical weather update from this afternoon, the 2 p.m. update again. Really, the two main systems that we'll be watching is this Caribbean system here. Uh, that could impact parts of the Yucatan Peninsula and then find itself here in the Bay of Campeche or southern Gulf of Mexico. We'll be watching Invest Area 97 now. This is no longer expected to really pose any significant threat to Bermuda. Again, this will probably come up and turn well away and uh, could potentially even become a strong hurricane out here. But the models are really not indicating any significant concern for the island of Bermuda. And then Invest Area 98L, which again will probably be much of the same on out to sea it goes. Now looking here at the visible satellite imagery, this is for Invest Area 97L. Again, not really too much occurring with this and not really much is expected during the next several days. We notice a couple of low-level swirls here, but the convective structure is not really there. And one of the reasons for that, again, we can go back to the water vapor imagery. We notice that, again, we're dealing with a pretty uh, distinct area of dry air out in front of this. And just generally unfavorable conditions out here. But once this starts to go a little bit more north, you can kind of see some of these uh, lighter gray colors. This is very representative of a moist environment up here. So this large system will be moving into this general area where the favorability will be more. And you'll have probably a better shot at tropical cyclone genesis at that particular time. If you look, take a look here at the imagery on 98L, we can see that, again, we have a storm today or a system today that looks better organized at the surface. And there is some hints here of a low-level circulation in this region, um, which we've been kind of monitoring over the last several days. Now, this low-level circulation is backing into some of the convection, but you notice kind of that mid-level energy is right here, kind of associated along with this mid-level circulation here. And this is probably where we'll see, again, some consolidation for something to try to develop in this region. Not really sure that we'll get much to actually develop here. Again, the chances of development have really decreased now down to about 30% over the next several days. And this is in part because we have a pretty unfavorable environment as this begins to turn northward. Again, mainly kind of like 97L right now, the environment right here is just not all that favorable. And because we're not seeing genesis of this already, uh, it's going to be harder to get genesis as this begins to kind of pivot and move off towards the northwest like that. Now, if we take a look at this on a different product, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. For context, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. Again, here's Invest Area 97L, 98L, and this tropical disturbance here in the Caribbean. Not really much reflected of the system in the Caribbean. Again, it's not very well organized, but will be coming better organized during the next several days or so. Again, 97 and 98 should stay well away from land at this point. Again, may generate, especially if any of these particularly get strong, may generate some swells that may impact the lesser Antilles. But other than that, I'm not really concerned about these two systems either. So working from west to east here, we'll start on the GFS, the 12Z run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Again, uh, here, this is the 850 millibar of vorticity plot. So the, the darker reds here, that is higher cyclonic spin at 5,000 feet. 
Again, this is our broad upper level system right now uh, that is kind of sitting over near the Bahamas, bringing with it some showers and thunderstorms. Now, if we take a look here at the 200 millibar wind uh, pattern, we notice this very large upper level disturbance. This is a tropical upper tropospheric trough or a TUTT, TUT, and this is generating a lot of vertical wind shear down here across the Caribbean. So in the short term, we can actually see there's two, uh, but in the short term, we're not going to get any genesis down here Again, with this tropical wave that is now approaching the Lesser Antilles, or is, I'm sorry, west or, yeah, west of the Lesser Antilles at this point, uh, we won't really see much development out of this during the next several days. Strong upper level winds cutting across like this. Uh, but as we start to back out in time, if we kind of move the GFS forward, we get a cyclonically developing uh, flow here aloft, or kind of or an anti cyclonic flow aloft, rather. And this is in part because, again, we get this broad monsoon trough that tries to develop down across this region. And it the diabetic warming from that really kind of weakens this tut over what would basically be now over Florida, or what's left of it. It really weakens it and instead enhances the outflow uh, around here. So you get a very favorable upper level environment. And in fact, a storm tries to develop on the southern edge of this here. Uh, by Friday. But again, the main concern here is that if a storm develops on the southern edge of it, it's going to remain rather sloppy and disorganized. Again, it, this would be displaced uh, from kind of the center of this upper level outflow pattern, which does mean that there would be some wind shear impacting the storm. Not a high amount, but there would be some. And we can kind of see that here on the vortex average sounding. If we kind of take a look at that, there's about, you know, 15 to 20 knots of shear. Uh, and a large part of that, again, is generally because of the fact that it's displaced from this area. And when you have a displaced system like that, it tends to create shear. Now, uh, looking out further in time, again, the storm tries to move generally towards the northwest like this. Again, it's kind of jumpy around. Uh, now, at this particular time here, if we take a look here at the 500 millibar height anomalies, uh, just to get an idea for steering, again, we have this ridge over here to the north, uh, which is generally trying to back off towards the west. So generally around it, you kind of get a northwesterly steering component like that. But there is also a trough that is over the central plains, which you can't really see here on this domain sector. But it is actually beginning to erode this ridge right here. And because this ridge is trying to expand westward, this, uh, this trough here on the you know top of the screen is eroding it and kind of creating this natural weakness in the ridge right here. So if we have a storm that is able to get a little further northward, we have this ridge here or this, this trough here with a ridge over here. And that tries to create more of a steering flow generally closer towards South Texas. Now, again, uh, you know, it's not necessarily saying that Texas is going to be hit, but it is a possibility. Now, if we go back and look at the GFS, the 850 millibar vorticity, we notice that it is very broad and disorganized down here. And this is not a really strong storm at this time. And that's the one thing I kind of want to emphasize is that whatever really happens, even in the Yucatan Peninsula and the Caribbean, will be relatively weak. Uh, we don't expect to see a very potent, strong hurricane in this region because the Central American gyres take a very long time to kind of consolidate and bundle vorticity to one end. And tropical cyclones have a notoriously hard time uh, for the first couple of days really getting organized in this environment until it kind of leaves that. And we even saw that, you know, even with Hurricane Michael back in 2018, it took a while to get organized before it lifted into the Gulf and exploded into that, you know, Category 5 into Mexico Beach. We all kind of know that story, but it took a while to, to actually get going down here in this region. So again, this, the, you know, kind of the moral of the story is that anything that forms down here will likely be very weak and disorganized. Now, uh, the one thing I will be monitoring here is if a system can develop a little bit further towards the Northeast in this better outflow and has a better chance of riding northward. And if a storm can ride further northward, it's going to be more than likely to, uh, to be captured by the trough and get pulled northward into kind of the uh, southwestern Gulf of Mexico. And again, we can kind of see that, you know, here's this trough here. And if it, you know, if the storm is just a little bit 
more towards the north like that and perhaps stronger. It gets captured by this trough and gets ejected more into Texas, etc. Now, that's not a guarantee, and it's definitely not to say that Texas will be hit. We just don't know the answers, uh, certainly this far out. The 12Z European run, for what it's worth, again, is very weak and disorganized, and that's just to kind of show the comparison uh, that, you know, this is not necessarily a guarantee. Remember here, you know, it is definitely further north and east here, uh, but it takes a while to get organized, and this would be nothing more than a rainmaker at this point as it generally heads northward. So I'm not really super concerned about this at the moment. Uh, just because of the model differences. Now, we all know that the European has struggled to develop systems this year, but, you know, to be fair, we also have to give the GFS a little bit of, uh, you know, a hard time too, because the GFS has even had a hard time picking up on this. Now, again, I think we're still a couple of days away from really picking up on when we can confidently say that something would likely be a concern for the United States. If you look here at the GFS ensembles and the ensemble mean sea level pressure, again, all of these red numbers here, this indicates where a potential storm could be and the given spread of it. So this is by about 8 a.m. Saturday. We can see that the GFS has a wide range of possibilities ranging from just a very weak disturbance to uh, perhaps a stronger cyclone somewhere here in the Caribbean and nearing the Yucatan Peninsula. And then again, the spread increases by Sunday evening. Again, this would be pretty fast moving because this is here on Saturday morning and is already here in, you know, just a little over 24 hours. If, in fact, if we go 24 hours, the storm is initially here and now it's crossing over the Yucatan. So less than 20, so about 24 hours, uh, this traverses a pretty long range and that is over about, you know, 250 miles uh, so confidently, we can say that this would probably be very fast moving. And again, anything that forms here, again, this is the, the GFS out to day five, uh, again, the ensembles, you have a wide range of possibilities ranging from a storm, a, a very weak system over Central America, or a stronger system emerging off the Yucatan Peninsula. For what it's worth here, if you go back to the steering component and if we go to the 500 millibar height anomalies, Again, the GFS is pretty much, or the GFS ensembles are pretty much in agreement here. Big trough over here, this ridging over here, but a trough digging down into the north here. That so that actually begins to kind of erode this ridge here. And there's still a little bit of ridging you can kind of see here, but there's a weakness in this ridge, and you don't have to have a strong ridge, especially, or you don't have to have a non-existent ridge. But if this ridge can be significantly eroded by an approaching trough from the north, uh, you generally could get a storm that tends to favor more of a north kind of a northwest component like that and kind of follows around, uh, you know, part of the ridge up to the north here. So uh, there's a lot of different variables that kind of go into this. Now, the one thing, uh, again, here on the 200 millibar wind plot, we notice that, again, there's a very favorable outflow, very decent outflow pattern and another one that might be coming into play later on beyond the five-day realm. Uh, but this would be a very favorable outflow pattern and would be very supportive for something to strengthen. But just because we have an outflow pattern does not mean that it's instant strengthening. Again, you have to kind of keep in mind that the Central American gyres, these monsoon troughs, are very large. They take a long time to consolidate. And even if you have the most favorable background environment, if you have a very large, broad system, it's hard to consolidate it right away, like some of the smaller storms, i.e. Wilma, uh, et cetera, that were smaller and able to take advantage of their environment much quicker. So this would, you know, on the surface, it looks very conducive, but when you dig into it, there is some setting, you know, there's some setbacks to significant organization. But if we get a storm that it manages to get further north in the short term and something that develops further north, we could be dealing with a potential hazard down the road, especially for United States interest or potentially even Mexico. Now, if we look here at the European ensembles, this is the 60 run from earlier from this morning, basically. We notice again, here's our subtropical storm out here. Uh, we'll be watching for this wave here, again, approaching the lesser until he's not really concerned about that. No significant model uh, concern. Here's our storm over here, this Caribbean system. Again, this is out to about 96 hours, and this is just out to about day five. Again, we have a wide range of possibilities from a storm 
that is sitting over Mexico at this point to a storm that is north of the Yucatan Peninsula. And then eventually here you can kind of see the eventual, there's a significant spread here. But the bottom line is there's still a lot of significant uncertainty going forward in this long range for in the, the medium range forecast. And it's just always best to kind of keep checking back again. I, I feel like we'll have a more confident forecast over the next couple of days as a system begins to take shape. Given the fact that, again, this wave is actually still over the Caribbean right now, over the Eastern Caribbean, uh, and is not over in this region yet, and we don't have that monsoon trough that has formed quite yet, it's going to be very tricky to kind of say what's going to happen from there. So I think that in two or three days, we'll have a better answer. But right now, I don't think we're quite there yet. So, of course, keep checking back. No real plans at the moment to go anywhere, but if there is something that is of a greater concern to the United States, then Chase plans at that point would be considered. So stay tuned to that. And of course, we'll be letting everybody know if you want to check out our Twitter for more constant updates. The link will be down in the description down below. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.